This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1699, Good Guys and Bad Guys, by Margot Aaron of ThatSeemsImportant.com. Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday, and welcome to another installment of ORD. I'm Greg Audino, your host and narrator. So thankful to have you here with me today, and that is because I've got a post ready for you that I'm very, very excited to read. This one speaks to me a little extra. And it comes from Margot Aaron, who we haven't heard from on our show in a while, uh, though she is featured more regularly on Optimal Living Daily and Optimal Startup Daily. So it's great to share her work again. It's great to feel inspired. And let's get to it now as we optimize your life. Good Guys and Bad Guys by Margot Aaron of ThatSeemsImportant.com There are no good guys and bad guys. We'll start with the punchline. I've tried really hard to divide the world into them. It would be easier if people were all good or all bad. Evil versus virtue, cruel versus kind, love versus hate, justice versus injustice. None of these dichotomies are real. Often cruelty comes from kindness. Hate can be born of love. Evil believes it has virtue. Injustice can be just. That's to say, it's complicated. My kid watches these shows where the lines are really clear. Good guy, evil guy. Helpful friend, backstabbing friend. Useful information, irrelevant information. Real life has no such lines. We're all a confusing mess of both and all. I searched for a long time for a villain in my story. Even made a few up. But the sad truth is that there are no bad people. Only bad behaviors. We cannot judge a person. We can only judge their actions. And in those actions, I found many villains who are also heroes. It depends on how you tell the story, whose perspective you take. I saw a meme recently about how we're obsessed with bad guys and evil because it's a mirror to us of what we are capable of if pressed. I wrote something similar about Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders. My take was that we all want to believe we can be saved. But I think this other take might be on to something. That it isn't just about our being redeemed, but our dark sides. How, when pressed, any of us can become the worst versions of ourselves. We like to believe that who we are is baked in. That you sort of cement into your personality at some point. Ben is always angry. Maria is always talkative. Grace is always outgoing. Yuri is always sullen. Levi never listens. Psychology has long held that personality is fixed. There are a bunch of folks on Team DNA that claim nature trumps nurture. But it doesn't. Because that dichotomy itself is a false construct. There is no nature without nurture. The two are connected. You don't have DNA without epigenetics. You don't know which genes to turn on or off. It's a moot point, this whole nature versus nurture. There is no binary. It's both and. None of us is all one thing. I have many times been the bad guy. Not on purpose. Sometimes on purpose. I have many times been the good guy. Not on purpose. Sometimes on purpose. I am only, always, ever human. And to be human is to have good and bad, simple and complicated, hate and love, which, by the way, are not opposite. The opposite of love is indifference. The opposite of hate is kindness. I wish the world was broken up into good guys and bad guys. It would make things a lot easier, a lot more certain. That desire for certainty worries me. We divide the world into good guys and bad guys when we feel uncertain, when we need the world to make sense, when we have no footing, no ground. We need an enemy and we need a hero to make ourselves feel safe. The reason Fox and CNN can control the minds of so many is that they propagate this narrative structure. It's a cheap trick, old as time. Us versus them. Republicans are good, Democrats are evil. Democrats are good, Republicans are evil. They are bad, we're good. There's no middle ground, no gray, black and white, simple. It's not simple. It's lazy. I've watched many smart people lose their minds to this craving for certainty, willing to lie to themselves and others about what is true so that they can maintain their worldview, which is always the same one. I'm a good person, it's not my fault. Having someone to blame for how things are, what you feel, or why it happened, is lazy. Blame is cheap, and self-deception is cowardly. Honesty, 
accountability, and introspection are hard. They take courage. When we cling to a bifurcated model of the world, it's dishonest. No one is all good or all bad. No side is all right or all wrong. Blind adherence to a team isn't loyalty, it's lazy. And we've seen it before. In Letters to a German Friend, Albert Camus, who is French, called the Germans Helots of the Intelligence, which is my new favorite sick burn. Second to this one, quote, The heart is not all you betray. The intellect takes its revenge. You have not paid the price it asks, not made the heavy contribution intellect must pay to lucidity. From the depths of defeat, I can tell you that that is your downfall. End quote. I agree. I challenge us to be less psychologically lazy and more courageous. Let's fight the helots of intelligence and not betray our hearts. No one is all one thing. You just listened to the post titled, Good Guys and Bad Guys, by Margot Aaron of ThatSeemsImportant.com. We scavenged. We stalked. We did things. We're really ashamed of. Yellow Jackets, Showtime's Emmy-nominated phenomenon returns. There was some darkness with us. I thought when we were rescued that we left it there, but they brought it back with us. We We hear the wilderness and it hears us. We hear the wilderness and it hears us. I thought you'd be more excited to see me. Yellow Jackets, new episode streaming now, only on Showtime, and now stream Showtime on Paramount+. Plus. As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. And dare I say, a sublime post from Margot today. Potentially the one I feel most attuned with of all the ones I've ever read for you guys up to this point. Honestly, it it feels like what I have been thinking and screaming at people for years now. She does such a wonderful job of embracing that ever-present, ever-boundaryless gray area here, which is important to do in any facet of life, perhaps most importantly in relationships. We try to cling to labels like good and bad and black and white, because they give us comfort, or a false sense of certainty, as she mentioned. And this means of compartmentalization is something we often consider to be logical, right? But it is lazy. It's a way of soothing ourselves. So, in this way, logic sort of lives under the umbrella of emotion. They're not at odds as people often think they are. We're always living by decisions or thought processes that are ultimately about making us feel better. Maybe the best and least exhausting way to feel better is to accept this gray area, accept this lack of answers, and drop the resistance. Okay, that's all for me today, everybody. Great article, which we thank Margot for once again. Thanks to all of you for showing up and making another episode possible. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you again tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.